what do you see on the screen? We see that here we have a huge surf wave almost looks like it will now flash on or bang on to the bushes that are present here. So this huge surf wave with colorful granite rocks is what we can find in the smallest continent on earth. Yes, we can find this amazing natural formation in Australia. So Australia as a continent is unique in its own, not only because of its landscape, but also because of its distinct geographical features. The continent is full of adventure. So let's see what the continent has more to offer. So now if we take a look at the map of Australia, we see that the distinct geographical features of the continent can be divided under four main headings. What are these? So the continent has four distinct and major geographical features. That is the Great Western Plateau that dominates two thirds of the continent, followed by the Central Lowlands. It lies almost at the center of the continent. Then we have the Eastern Highlands. So the Eastern Highlands rightly falls on the eastern part of the continent right beside the Central Lowlands. And after the Eastern Highlands, we have a narrow coastal plains that surrounds almost the entire continent. So the fourth important physical division is the coastal lowlands. So these are the four major distinct geographical features of the continent, right? In this lesson, we'll put our focus on the first physical division, which dominates almost two thirds of the continent. That is the Great Western Plateau. So let's see what exactly can we learn about the Great Western Plateau. So the Great Western Plateau is unique because it dominates the climate and vegetation of the continent. How? Well, the Great Western Plateau is an arid and semi-arid region of the continent and as we can see that it covers a huge area or the entire western half of the continent. Now from the definition of plateau we know that plateaus are highland or high elevated areas with respect to the surrounding areas and they usually have a flat terrain. So the Great Western Plateau also is a high elevated land and it has a flat terrain. It has a rugged surface and has high cliffs. Now the Great Western Plateau region of Australian continent looks like a vast red landscape from space. So here is an image that shows how exactly the Great Western Plateau region looks like from space. So it looks like a vast red landscape. Now this Great Western Plateau is not of a recent origin. It is one of the oldest land formations of the continent. So the Great Western Plateau is one of the oldest landforms in Australia and is made up of hard rocks, right? So it is made up of hard rocks. Now the Great Western Plateau, as I already mentioned, has arid to semi-arid conditions. That means that the area has a rugged surface, mostly comprising of rocky or sandy surfaces. So the Great Western Plateau that dominates the continent of Australia is one of the oldest geological formations and is composed of hard rocks. Now because the region is so old and has been existing since a very long time, it also has a special name to it. Now shield as we know refers to one of the oldest land forms on earth. Now the Great Western Plateau region is believed to be a part of that shield or one of the oldest landforms on earth. So the Great Western Plateau region is also often regarded as the Australian shield. So here is an image that shows us how exactly the region of the Great Western Plateau looks like. Now, as I mentioned, the Great Western Plateau is a high elevated land with a flat terrain with rugged cliffs and sharp edges. So this plateau gently slopes towards the eastern side of the continent, which means that it is higher in elevation in the western part. However, it gently slopes down towards the eastern side of the continent. 
Now in this region there are various mountain ranges that rise from the plateau. So the Great Western Plateau is home to or consists of many mountain ranges. Now out of all those some very important and significant mountain ranges present on the Great Western Plateau region are the McDonnell Range, the Musgrave Range, Hammersley Range and finally the Darling Range. So these four are the most important mountain ranges present in the region. Now besides that we need to keep in mind that these mountain ranges are not as high as the Himalayas present in the country of India. Why so? Because Himalaya on one side is of a recent origin that is they are young fold mountains. However these mountain ranges that rise from the great western plateau are not of a recent origin. They have been present here since a very long time and are relatively older as compared to the Himalayas. Now let us take a look at the map of Australia again. So we see that the Tropic of Capricorn passes almost through the center of the continent and it divides the continent into two temperature zones. So when the Tropic of Capricorn passes through the continent, it divides the continent into the North Torrid Land and the South Temperate Land which means that the northern portion of the continent is comparatively hotter as compared to the southern portion. So the Tropic of Capricorn divides the continent into two temperature zones. Now studies show that more than 70% of the main land area of the continent receives less than 500 millimeters of rainfall annually. This is why the continent is often regarded as an arid or semi-arid continent. Right? So because of such scanty rainfall or such low annual rainfall, the continent is majorly dominated by semi-arid conditions. Now because of that very reason, much of the interior of the Great Western Plateau region comprises of hot deserts. So the interior of the Great Western Plateau region consists of hot deserts. And what are these deserts? Well, we have the Great Sandy Desert, the Gibson Desert and the Great Victoria Desert. So these are the three major deserts that dominates the Plateau region. So here are images of the two important deserts of the region that is the Gibson Desert and the Great Victoria Desert. Now these deserts receive very less rainfall and the vegetation is very very sparse. The vegetation that can be found more commonly here are thorny bushes and scrubs. Other than that we see that the surface of the deserts are mostly rocky and sandy. Now almost all types or species of eucalyptus trees are native to Australia. So eucalyptus trees are found mostly along the margins of the deserts. Studies and research tells us that three quarters of the Australian forest is mostly eucalypt forests. That means that eucalyptus is one of the most dominant vegetation of the continent. Now out of all the species, the most commonly found species of eucalyptus found particularly along the margins of the deserts are meli. So meli are the most common species of eucalyptus trees that are found here. Now as I've already mentioned a while ago that the continent is majorly dominated by arid to semi-arid conditions, right? Which makes the existence of these eucalyptus trees very, very favorable. Why so? Because eucalyptus trees are adapted to forest fires and wildfires. Well, it is believed that the eucalyptus trees re-sprout even after a wildfire and they have seeds that can survive any fire. So this is the reason we have the existence of such huge variety and quantity of eucalyptus trees in Australia. Now besides that unique vegetation, the deserts are home to camels. Now camels is often regarded as synonymous to deserts but in Australia the case is not the same. In Australia camels were not present from the very beginning. They were brought down by the British to cross the huge vast deserts. Now the common norm or the common form of traveling is used by 
planes and helicopters and these camels are not as much used as in earlier times now the great western plateau region or particularly the deserts are a home to many large to small mammals however in this region the largest terrestrial mammal that are found are the red kangaroo so the red kangaroo is often believed to be native to the western plateau region so here is an image of the red kangaroo now it is believed that these kangaroos are mostly active during the dusk and dawn time when the temperatures are much cooler so then they are more active and go out in the search of food now other than that since they are mostly active during dusk and dawn time they are often regarded or categorized as crepuscular animals So that was about the largest terrestrial mammal that are found in the western plateau region. Now before we proceed with our lesson I look into some more unique animals that are found in the plateau region help me fill in the blanks. So Australia's largest terrestrial mammal is the red kangaroo or the wallaby or is it the koala bear? Well the correct answer is the red kangaroo the red kangaroos are the largest terrestrial mammal found in australia so that was a kookaburra how enthusiastic was he now the great western plateau region though is home to various birds and mammals it is also home to one of the native birds of australia that is the kookaburra Now the kookaburra as we can see on the image is a beautiful little bird and is known or famous for its distinctive laugh so known for their distinctive laugh the kookaburra are native to australia and are mostly found in the western plateau region now the kookaburra because of the distinctive laugh is also known as laughing jackass Now another interesting fact about the kookaburra is that the signature sound of the kookaburra is is often taken as a cue for the Australian radio to start its broadcast. So the kookaburra definitely is a bird of high value and importance. Now though the great western plateau region is home to so many birds animals and a unique vegetation it also is unfortunately prone to a lot of bushfires and wildfires so have you heard of the black saturday well the black saturday is regarded as one of the worst natural disasters of the continent of australia what exactly happened during this time well the black saturday bushfire took place on february 2007 particularly between 7th feb to 14th feb and is regarded as one of the worst natural disasters in australian history so in this there were around 400 individual bushfires only in the australian state of victoria so victoria was majorly affected because of this bushfire and there were other regions of australia that were also affected by this bushfire it is believed that around 4500 square kilometers of land was destroyed because of this fire around 173 people died and more than 2000 houses were burnt so this unfortunate event was called as the black saturday bushfire because it damaged not only land but it also killed people and took away homes of many so forest fires are one of the most common unfortunate events that occurs in australia the great western plateau region that is home to such huge variety of animals and unique vegetation but they are majorly damaged and are under huge threat because of such frequent forest fires that occurs in the continent of australia 
Now the Great Western Plateau region is also known or famous for its unique geological formations that is the billabongs. Now billabongs are very unique to this plateau region. Now these billabongs are not only a huge tourist attraction but are also a sacred place for the aboriginals of Australia or the native people of Australia. It has a unique landscape of its own and it is also known for its good fishing grounds. Now what exactly are billabongs? Well billabongs are just another name or Australian name for oxbow lakes. Now how are these oxbow lakes formed? Well when the rivers change course or when the meanders tend to break away from the main river or stream. So here is a demonstration of the same where we can see that deposition and erosion eventually leads to the cutting off of the meander of a particular river or stream. So when this meander gets cut off from the main river or stream because of continuous deposition and erosion, it leads to the formation of a geological formation that is a oxbow lake. A similar thing exists in the western plateau region of Australia where we have many billabongs or oxbow lakes. So when the meanders break away from main river, it results into the formation of oxbow lakes and these are known as billabongs in Australia. So here is an image of a billabong where we can see that this particular meander has been cut off from the main river. Now though they are cut off from the surface, the water in the billabongs are still linked with the main river in the underground. So these billabongs are seasonally filled by different forms of precipitation and are linked to the main river in the underground. Now the harsh climatic conditions of the western plateau region makes it an ideal location for military training. So military training in hot and arid region of Australia, particularly the Western Plateau region, becomes very, very ideal as these harsh climatic conditions stands perfect to test the endurance and ability of the soldiers that are held here. Now, besides being a good ground for military training, the Western Plateau region is also rich in many mineral resources. Now, these mineral resources mostly include iron ore, gold, uranium, lead, copper, nickel and zinc. So these are the main mineral resources that are found in the Western Plateau region. So to extract these minerals, some of the most important mining activities here are iron ore mining and uranium mining. Other than that, we also find huge gold deposits here. So this region definitely has a lot to offer, not only because of its unique geological formations, not only because it is a good ground for military training, but it is also rich in such important mineral resources. So in this lesson, we were able to understand that the continent of Australia can be divided under four major geological categories, that is the Western Plateau region, the Central Lowlands, the Eastern Highlands and the coastal lowlands. In this lesson, we learnt in details about the western plateau region that dominates the continent of Australia. It covers almost two-thirds of the land area and is home to many animals, birds, hot deserts, unique geological formations like billabongs and are rich in mineral resources and are good grounds for military training. In next lesson, we learn about the central lowlands of Australia and see how fertile these lands are being home to some of the most important river systems of the continent. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.